now let's talk about some things to consider whenever you're running this product. Whether you're running an ABI or ABE, meaning again, applied ballistics, internal or external, I'm gonna give you some things to consider. Whenever the unit is turned on, the last thing that you range will populate here in the yards. And your wind and all that stuff will apply to that. Now, if I turn this off, what you're gonna see is it's gonna go back to a different number. 2.94 and 0.12. That is going to be based off of the most bottom target on your target card, okay? so. If I go in here and I change the wind speed, it will update, all that good stuff will happen. Uh, and additionally, if I go into the weather screen and scroll down to the bottom to movers speed, and let's just say I plug in as soon as it'll let me. I'm gonna plug in 25 miles per hour here. All right, if I go back to the hood, notice it's putting that in my Lead. So if I turn the wind all the way down to zero, just for you to see, at, again, the most bottom target, 500, 2.94 mils of elevation, it's saying the lead for a 25 mile per hour target is 16.88 mils. Now, if I was to turn this back on, that's going to change back to the last thing that it ranged with the Fire 4000. Additionally, if I was to go out and range something, let's just say I range down the hall, I got seven yards. Now that I've got seven yards, I've still got in here 25 mile per hour on my mover. Now at seven yards, your movers aren't a big deal, but I've confirmed this at extended ranges, at least 500. And the lead or the mover down here for your target speed does not apply to your wind in the ABI mode. It will also not do it in the Kestrel ABE mode. You must scroll down to the lead to figure that out. Additionally, what I think is interesting is they put a target speed in here, but you can't find your lead in the target card. There's nothing for lead or the range card. And even if you hit the settings button, nothing pops up about uh, a lead. So interested to, to, to know why they put that in there, but if you wanna know what your lead is, Again, all you simply have to do is turn your firing unit off, range it, and your lead will pop up in windage. If you have your wind turned to zero, you can figure out what your lead is. So it's kind of a backwards way of doing it. But if you don't have a Kestrel and you need to know your lead, that's one way you could figure it out, I suppose. All right, next up, understand that this unit, when it's turned on and in ABI mode, it always accounts for spin drift and aerodynamic jump based off of what you put in the gun build data. In this case, we've made a one in 10 with a right hand twist. So this gun data with whatever speed we put in, it's always going to adjust the elevation based off of aerodynamic jump, the bullets vertical deflection from wind and spin drift will always be applied to the wind. There's no way to turn that off in this app. I was lucky, uh, I, I called uh, Tango Enos and talked to one of their tech and design engineers, Ruben, and he was very beneficial at helping me understand that and confirm it. Uh, but again, Spindrift and AJ are always turned on and you cannot turn that off in the AB Boss Snaps app. Kestrel is a different story, you can turn it off. Uh, let's move on down. Because the Fire 4000 does not have a compass within it, notice it didn't ask us to do any compass calibration, then every time we shoot, we need to update the heading. And we can do that via this button right here. We can just simply point it at the target and update the heading, and that would change the elevation uh, within the Fire 4000 and the app. Now, with that said, you don't necessarily need to change your heading every single shot unless you're shooting out at a pretty extended range, uh, you know, roughly the transonic range, or even a little bit closer, it's not that big of a deal if you're only shifting a direction of fire by a few degrees, you know. But if you're shifting from zero degrees direction of fire or heading all the way back to 180, or vice versa, then it's a good rule of thumb that you should be updating it. 
So again, keep that in mind. You need to update in here. And the important part about that is you need to update the heading before you take the range. If I take the range and then update the heading, it's not going to solve for that problem because it's already solved based off of what you gave it. So ensure you do the heading before you do the range. The next thing is if we're doing a temperature and environmental update, if I pull this from the internet, then it's only going to be as accurate as a local station near me. So if I'm out in the middle of nowhere, it may not be as precise, but it's still going to be pretty good. All right. And again, lastly, expect this app to be shut down in about two weeks. So I, I think the quantum app will be a little bit better. Not a dig at this by any means, but it's got a few things that I don't quite understand. Uh, again, if you've got the unit turned off while you're working within here, you can see some stuff, but the moment you turn the unit back on, that stuff changes. So don't be alarmed if you're trying to figure out what's going on and compare it to your Kestrel. It's not going to be perfect because the Kestrel is accounting for certain things or those certain things are turned off and this thing is accounting for them. Okay. So next let's talk about the ABE. So if I hit the M yards or meters button and I long hold, I'm going to change this to ABE mode. Now, if I turn on my Kestrel, the first thing you should consider is if I was to go and range this, so say I range it over here, I got seven yards. Seven yards, notice it didn't do anything in my Kestrel. So that's your first consideration, is when you turn your Kestrel on to link it to your, uh, your Fire 4000, you need to go back to your system settings, Bluetooth, go down to Device Connect, and it should start searching. A lot of times what I've found is it will sit there and, and search. If, if you just change from ABI to ABE, is go ahead and do a power cycle, power off, power on, and then you'll see it'll quickly find the device and connect. All right, and now you can see that it's connected, it says it there on the Kestrel. So now when I go back to the ballistic screen and I range something, you're gonna see your next consideration of how close can you range something to get an elevation. I believe the closest that you can range is 25. Uh, I, I've I found that 50 and on is not a big deal, but anything super close, it's not going to populate. But if I was to go out and say range something at uh, 100 yards or so, no problem, it's going to range it and it's going to be good to go. Unlike the ABI, the ABE mode allows you to go in and turn off certain things. So if I go into my environment and I take my spin drift and I turn it off and my AJ and I turn that off, then it will be off inside of the Fire 4000. If I have them on, it will be on inside of the Fire 4000. So that's your next consideration to keep in mind. Again, just like ABI, this does not have a compass calibration or a compass at all. So before we range something, and get a, a range to it, we need to look at our target and we need either do a capture of direction of fire or we need to manually input the direction of fire here, right? But you wanna make sure that you get a good accurate direction of fire before you range because if I range and then update direction of fire, it's not gonna compute or solve for that problem. So update your heading before you do that. Same thing, wind. If you are doing wind at three o'clock, then you can either capture the wind direction and speed or you cannot, but just understand that it's going to solve for what you put in the Kestrel, not what it sees. It's not sensing wind down range. It's sensing what you're telling it in the Kestrel. So understand that and make sure you put it in there correctly. Another thing is if I go into target and if I go down to target speed TS and you can see here, I've got it on 25 miles per hour. I'm going to go real quick and I'm going to make this range of target at 100 yards or so and I'm going to just confirm to you that it's not pulling the lead into the wind, okay? All right, so I just range the target at 120 and as you can see, it's got a 0.2 down and a 0.9 right setting inside of the, uh, the Fire 4000. Now, as I told you, it's not pulling the lead and just to confirm that, I'm going to go down in a Kestrel down a range card at the same range, 120, and it's telling me the lead should be 14.35 mils. So if it was computing that, it would say it here in the winded screen, but it's not computing that. 
So again, just keep that in mind. It doesn't matter if you're running ABI or ABE, it's not giving you the lead inside of your wind, regardless. All right, the last consideration for the applied ballistics external linked up to your Kestrel is the fact that when you range a target, it does not give you the time of flight and the muzzle velocity at the bottom of the screen like it gives you on ABI. It may be a big deal for some of you if you're trying to do things like shoot movers and you want to know time or uh, mills moved in a second times time of flight to get your lead. Others, it, you may not really care about it too much. You may have just realize that, hey, this gun is roughly one second around 650 meters and it's roughly two seconds at X range. You may just have it memorized, so it may not be a big deal. You also don't have the muzzle velocity on there, or not the muzzle velocity, but the remaining velocity. Again, it may not be a big deal. If you want to know what velocity remains at that range, sure, I guess uh, it'd be cool to know, but I don't think it's really a need to know. What I do have an issue with is that they marketed this as saying it's got time of flight and remaining velocity on the screen, and they didn't say it was only for ABI. So hopefully it's just a bug or a glitch within the current AB Boss Snaps app or whatever software package they have on there. And hopefully it's an upgrade we can easily download via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. When the AB Quantum app takes over the AB Boss Synapse, maybe that will fix things. Maybe it won't. Either way, uh, I, I wish it was there. Or if it is not there, I wish they'd at least fill in the gaps with something like a bubble level. If there was some sort of cant in this thing, that would be great. If I, if I didn't need a send it uh, scope level or a, an additional scope level on my thing, if everything could be captured in here, that would be great. But as of right now, it's just an empty spot not being utilized. Things that I would like to see in the future of the Fire 4000. First and foremost, I would like to see some little notches right here similar to a uh, what you'd find on binos for dummy cording a lens cap. Something like a 100 Concepts lens cap would be great on here, but I don't really see anywhere where you could put it on. Talking with some of their team and their engineers, it does sound like a 3D printed cap will be coming in the near future for not only the objective lens side of the house, but also the LCD side of the house. But that would be one thing I want to see. The next thing I want to see is we've only got three display modes for power and it's a bit too bright for nighttime settings if you're using running it for coyote hunts or whatever it may be. So I'd like to see a lower uh, nighttime setting for the display. I would also like to see an incorporation of cant. If this thing could tell you when you're canted more than say one degree left, one degree right and bang on, that would be awesome. Even if it was something as simple as, hey, you're five degrees left, you're zero can at all, or you're five degrees right, I think that'd be great. Uh, I don't think they need to have colors like the send it, but it, it would be cool to have that in there. Uh, the time of flight would be great to see on AVE mode. I'm not 100% convinced that I need it, nor do I think I need the remaining velocity in there for the AVE mode. But it would be cool to be able to have that. All right, again, part two of this video, we're going to take this unit out to the range, show you how to mount it to your optic, how to zero it, and how to utilize it in live fire conditions. I appreciate you for sticking with us. If you like this, hopefully you go ahead and hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and remember we have a bunch of videos just like this to include the seven part Kestrel masterclass video within our Razorback Tactical team room. The link to that, as well as the link to all these products, will be below in the description. Again, I appreciate you for sticking with us, and we'll see you on the range.